Hi, I'm Gemma Hepworth. And I'm Pooja Sisoja. And, and welcome, welcome to Hydro, Hydro Show. Show. We're going to be behind the scenes here today at Grow Expo 2012, here at the Manchester Central Convention Centre. This weekend they're expecting more than three and a half thousand visitors. So let's head inside to see what the hydroponics industry has in store for us. Manchester's Grow Expo is now in its third year. It's the only event of its kind in the UK, making it the go-to place for distributors, store owners and hydro enthusiasts alike. In our pop-up studio, we gave the show's exhibitors three minutes camera time to sell their product, service or company to the Hydro Show viewers. So now we've got Colin from Grow Tech Canada and Green Star Plant Products. Welcome, Colin. Hi. Welcome, friends. Yes. yes. <laughs> Our Grow Tech um, girls. Of course. Yes. Colin is going to tell us more about Grow Tech's diverse involvement in the hydro industry today. So, Colin, where and when did it all begin? Well, uh, Grow Tech is quite a mature company. Uh, we we were developed back in 1997 uh, in Vancouver, Canada, uh, and from that point. Uh, you know, working within the, the, the Canadian market, we've developed these formulas, uh, which is, is uh, now distributed right around the world. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, we manufacture in Vancouver, uh, and uh, yeah, we have distribution in, in the United States, Australia, and now here in Europe. Wow, yeah. pretty, big, pretty yeah. big empire there. So what is the goal of GrowTech? Well, uh, what, we, what I'd like is, is uh, and what we like to do, is look for innovation. Uh, we like to, you know, do the best that we can. Uh, all the products that are, that are developed by GrowTech are, are very um, unique and, and solid. Um, each product can be used individually or as a family of products. Okay, so it's uh, and it's you know so it's quite diverse. So we have everything from your growing into uh, into your early flower and late flowering stage. Yeah. What's your position at Green Star? Mm, well, my position is uh, director of hydroponics. Um, Green Star is quite a diverse company. Um, we have uh, both an uh, international uh, uh, hydroponic division, uh, but Green Star also has a, a lawn and garden division. Um, so we, we cater to, from pottery, uh, yoga frogs, bird cages, uh, you, you name it. So, uh, and then we also have a, a quite a large pet division too. Uh, so Green Star is, is a national Canadian wholesaler uh, for all three of these divisions. Yeah. Um, but then internationally, uh, we promote our brands, which are Rotec. Yeah. Great stuff. So where can we get more information on this company? Well, uh, you can find that at www.rotec.net uh, or through the Hydromag magazine. Um, there's a number of avenues, uh, you know, blogs, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, you name yeah. it, you know, the social medias. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we're, you know, we, we we're constantly looking for nice, unique avenues uh, to spread, you know, to send the message of, you know, of, uh, of this technology, of this industry. Uh, we were involved with the Urban Garden magazine uh, back in the day. We're very proud to be involved with the Hydro Mag uh, now, and uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to uh, to all everything that it has to bring. For Fantastic! Sure. Yeah. So thank you very much for talking to us today, yeah, Colin, thank and thank you, ladies, as well. Cheers. Excellent. Thank you. Brilliant. with Rob from Metrop and he's going to be talking about his new fertilizer. Welcome Rob. Hi. Thank you. Hi. So can you tell us what the main differences are between your nutrients and the others here at the show today? Yeah. Um, take a bottle please. Oh gosh, well yes. that's heavy. You can feel it's very heavy. Um, it's very high concentrated uh, liquid uh, fertilizer. That means that uh, one liter bottle of my product it's uh, similar like five, six liters from another Gosh. brand. Um, that's why we also have 250 ml small bottles for the smaller growers. And yeah, it saves a lot of uh, freight and, uh, and uh, yeah, cancer to carry uh, with you. Yeah, I see that. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so you bought three products with you here today. Would you like to tell us a bit about them? Yes, um, we got the, uh, the M01. 
Um, it is in 10, 40, 20, 40% 40 uh, phosphorus. Uh, why we put so much phosphorus in, uh, in the grow fertilizer is because the most, further, uh, the most phosphorus in a plant is in the root. Yeah, and the root is the basic. If you've got big roots in the beginning, you will have a big plant later. So uh, that's why we, we made it like that. Um, then we got the MR2, the flower fertilizer. It is in 10, 20, 40% potassium. Now, the more potassium you can give to a banana tree or a tomato plant, the bigger the tomatoes and the tom uh, bananas will be. Especially when you have double potassium against phosphorus, then you have a really maximum expansion of your uh, tomatoes. Uh, um, our number three fertilizer is a uh, calcium uh, fertilizer. That's, uh, but the calcium uh, elements are already connected to this uh, protein. And it's a special rock that we already made, because when you have a plant cell, the wall of a plant cell is mainly built from that calcium protein uh, element. And uh, yeah, we call this the cement for the cells. We make the cell walls bigger and harder and stronger, so we have less problems with fungi and materials. And uh, the products are much more heavier, and that weight is more money. So, uh, that's the most uh, big uh, important uh, difference. Thank you. That was Rob with Metrop Fertilizer. Okay, so I'd like to welcome Fernand from Haughty Line. Welcome. Hi. Hello. So you're here today to talk about this 5 watt clip fan. If you'd like to show that and what it's all about. Yeah, basically, uh, currently on the market you have normal clip fans that have not been designed, neither produced, to support uh, the adversity in a grow tent. In a grow tent you have to know that humidity might be very high also, the clip fans are not being produced to be running 24-7. Right. This means that the normal engine of a clip fan has oil, and this oil being used and warmed too much disappears, and then the clip fan gets broken. Right. So in our industry, unfortunately, there's many returns in shop of clip fans due to the fact that they got broken after three, six, or 12 months. Right, okay. So with this sort of fan, is there any advantages of this over any other fan on the market at the minute? Yes, there's two uh, big advantages basically with this clip fan. Uh, first of all, we have developed a new engine, which is a direct drive magnetic system. It's like basically the DJ plates, so we don't use any more oil which means that we really find out a way to have clip fans that can be working 24-7 in a grow yeah. tent, even in an adversity uh, environment. Oh. As you can see, the clip fan is, the engine is very, very clean. Mm. It's a very simple engine and you can put the wheel very easily like this as magnetic. So it's just great. Really straightforward, simple. Yes, so this is the first advantage. We can really assure people that this is going to work and run and run 24-7 without any problem. Fantastic. Another good point with this engine is that we could reduce to 5 watts only the consume. So this means that end user can do a saving on their invoice or in the, on their bill of electricity yeah, yeah. Uh, from 20 to 25 pounds a year wow, per yeah. clip fan. So if somebody has maybe five, six clip fans in, uh, in his room, yeah. this makes a big difference at the end of the year on the invoice of electricity. That is a big saving on yes, the electricity, exactly. isn't it? That's yes. a big advantage really exactly, there. Exactly. Great stuff. Also the design is very, very nice. Normally we are used to yeah, uh, white clip fans. Here we really worked very hard on the design. Mm -hmm. And you have the plug, which is uh, another very important part, it has a security system inside, which means that if it warms up for any kind of reason, it switch off automatically, avoiding any kind of troubles within the grow tent. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And that was Fernand from Haughty Line. today 
talking with Steph Turpin, who does marketing for Maxi Bright. Welcome to Hydro Show, Steph. Hi, thank you. <laughs> so, can you explain what your product's about today? Okay, this is an exciting new product. Um, it's the HSC 600 watt electronic ballast system from Autolux. Um, they're one of the world's biggest uh, developers in glass house technology. Um, what's different about this is that it brings glass house technology to the domestic system. So it's a 400 volt 600 watt lamp, um, but it basically can be connected to your domestic supply on the 240 volts and it steps that up. So you end up getting up to 10% more growth light from, from this. Um, it's got Philips components and Philips uh, master colour lamp. Um, it's designed to be compact and the fixture itself has a, a membrane protection. It allows moisture um, you know, to not be trapped within the, the ballast itself, but it seals it from the dirt. Um, you've got two reflectors that are interchangeable as well. That is a unique point about this, is that generally with these types of uh, all-in-one systems, they come with that reflector. With this, you can take this one out, um, and once your, your crop gets to a certain height, although you can use this one throughout, if you want a bit of an extra boost, um, you use the, the Zeta deeper penetration reflector. So you've got a bit of versatility there as well. Um, it comes complete with the lamp and reflector, this is the, the Delta reflector, um, both made of Myron 9 uh, material, which is basically glass coated aluminium, so it's 97% reflective. Um, so if you want a bit more, then you go you go to your Zeta, which is also Myron 9, high quality. So what's the difference between this product and other electronic power systems that are on it? Okay, well, what's different about this is um, because it's got the 400 volt Philips lamp, um, it's it's giving you up to 10% more growth light to your plants. So we, we measure growth light basically as uh, in par. Um, you know, in the past we've talked about lumens, but now we're, we're talking par. Um, it's more applicable to plants. It's basically photosynthetic active radiation. Um, you know, we want we want more powerful lighting, but we want it to be energy efficient as well, and that's what you're getting out of this system. So, how do plants respond to the increased impact? What happens is, uh, basically, plants respond to um, a spectrum from violet through to red, um, and you get you get a peak in in the blue area and the red area, um, which plants really need the most of. Um, the the measure of photons in those in those certain peaks is is what we take um, as a a beneficial light. So it's the most one of the most efficient systems you can get on the market now uh, in terms of how far forward it's moved in terms of gross light technology. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Hydro Show. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. Now we're going to join Gemma in the studio who's interviewing Macro Dong. So I'd like to welcome Macro from Grow Lush in Australia. Thank you. Welcome. So today we're going to talk about the OG Flector Macro and it's designed in the US. Uh, manufactured by Grow Lush and it's newly available on the UK market, is that right? Correct, yes. And now I'm going to lead you on to my first question. It's, well basically there are lots of reflectors on the market today. What makes this one different? Okay, OG unit is a developed to go vertical lamp concealed fitting. Least fitting is different to others on the market with horizontal lamp. And this one actually designed to, to have a lamp resource stretched and magnified and also the lights distributed evenly. What does OG stand for? OG stands for Original Guru Light. Yeah. Guru Light is an American company. They, they designed and developed this unit. Now one criticism of this reflector might be the lamp's not designed to be hung vertically. Does this affect the lamp life? 
No, it's not. Actually, the lamp manufacturer has developed the lamps suitable for horizontal and vertical these days. And you can see a lot of industrial lights, like factory lighting, commercial lighting, they are go vertical anyway, like a base. So in hydroponics business, hydroponics industry, and lamp is only used for first six, nine months to have a best light spectrum for the plants. So there's no problem of a uh, lamp life short or distorted and so on. Yeah, because they don't last forever. They don't last forever. Yeah, they don't use lamp forever. Because if you do use lamp forever, then you actually waste your energy bill and they don't give you the best results for the plants. So what's special about how this reflector stays cool? Uh, this reflector is designed to have a push-pull technology, consume the vacuum technology, so all the air circulating is around the lamp. So the air pushes through the fitting and it takes away the heat much quicker than other horizontal reflectors. Great stuff. Do you have any test results to verify this reflector is better than others on the market? Yes, there's lots of test results on the YouTube. And people can log on the YouTube, log in a grow line or OG challenging, you can see the test results on the vertical lamp, the uh, uh, test results are showing the 600 watt, almost equivalent to 1000 watt in the horizontal fitting. So basically you save the power bill and it's uh, energy, uh, energy saving for the, for the fitting as well. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Great stuff, thank you very much for joining no us problem. today. No problem, thank you thank for you. your time. Thank you. Great. So that was Macro from Grow Lush with the OG reflector. But first of all, we need to reach a, a healthy root system. So the smart pot, first of all, it's simple. Uh, it's made with basis molecule of polypropylene, and it's a, is easily recyclable all around the world. So a smart pot, it's a container that it's soft. Uh, it doesn't get um, eat into the root system. We have a better uh, watering system in a smart pot and also we can use it for more than five years up to 10 years 12 years that's the big difference between plastic that it's a short time uh, working fantastic okay going back to the healthy root system why do we need a healthy root system uh, a healthy healthy root system uh, uh, brings to the rest of the plants many many uh, advantage that we don't have in a circling I mean spiralization system root. Um, when you have a healthy uh, root system, you're going to get way much more assimilation of the nutrients, the fertilizer, the compost. If you're working in organic way, uh, oxygen makes available every molecules in the soil for the plants. And everybody knows uh, that a healthy root system brings more crop, more result, and a better, healthier plant. Now, it's easy to clean a plastic plant pot. How easy is it to clean a smart pot? And is it reusable? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we can easily clean it, a smart pot, because it's a tissue. So we can uh, just leave it into water, or if we have many, many, smart pot and we have a big production we can easily uh, put it to in a washing machine and a little bit of javel or vinegar it's gonna uh, dissolve all calcium in the container it's gonna kill pests disease i mean it's gonna aseptize the container which we were not able to do with other kind of container it's important that if you're doing this at home uh, use the right container because some tissue or soft container they're not allowed to go into the washing machine, they will fall apart. Uh, that's a big difference. Great. So where can we get more information on SmartPot? Uh, SmartPot, it's, it's available everywhere on Earth. Uh, just type down SmartPot on Google. You will have information in France, in Europe, in, in Canada, USA, in, in Brazil, in South America. Uh, rooting system, it's international problem and try to copy the natural uh, rooting system in soil in a container 
we uh, we were able 30 years ago, but now we want to introduce it to everybody, even at home, for fruits or vegetable. In, in what industry? Uh, even for hydro industry, it's a wonderful product. Available worldwide. Yeah, absolutely, right. easily. Yes. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for talking to us today, and I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you too. Thank you very much, Nick. So that was Nick from High Caliper talking to us about SmartPot. Hello and welcome back. We're currently joined by Dan from Ozone Environmental Technology. Welcome, Dan. Thank you very much. So I'd like to ask you a few questions. Could you talk us through Uvenair, which is an ozone generation product? Well, let me ask you the question. You're familiar with ozone, but in many different uh, forms. Uh, perhaps uh, you've been outside in a lightning storm. Billions of grams of ozone are being produced. Also, uh, tanning beds, uh, ozone's produced, photocopiers as well. Uh, those are just some of the forms of, of ozone that you're familiar with on a day-to-day -day basis. We produce ozone in two different uh, methods. One is ultraviolet, the other is corona discharge. Uh, the ultraviolet unit is a unit whereby you're passing air over an ultraviolet bulb at a certain electrical charge to it that's taking the oxygen molecule, which is O2, and splitting one of the molecules, making it O3. The third molecule is a very active little rascal and it likes to eat organic material. When ozone is not being produced, it will consume itself and revert back to pure oxygen in both cases, with the ultraviolet and with the corona discharge. The ultraviolet unit we talked about, the corona discharge, it's a unit whereby you're passing an electrical charge between a ceramic glass in the center and a metal grid on the inside and the outside of the ceramic. Basically, it's making many lightning bolts, and a lot of them. These units produce 10 times the ozone that the ultraviolet produce. And where we use them is a myriad of places in this industry, of course, in greenhouses and any hydroponic applications. So how does ozone fit into the hydroponic industry? Well, what we do is use ozone for sanitizing and disinfecting greenhouses. The uh, powdery mildews, mold, any bacteria, virus. And one of the, uh, the biggest problems is powdery mildew along with spiders and mites. Uh, you can use a variety of material to get rid of the spiders and mites, but it doesn't get rid of their eggs and one spider can produce 20, 30,000 eggs in a month period. So when you kill the mother spider, that's one thing, but she's got a lot of kids coming along behind her. And as a result, we use uh, the ultraviolet units for sterilizing your greenhouse first uh, to eliminate the eggs as well. So once this greenhouse has been totally sterilized, now we have a room that's as clean as an operating room in a hospital. Bear in mind, in an operating room in a hospital, after an operation has taken place, they autoclave all the utensils. And autoclaving is uh, 280 degrees of steam for a 20-hour period. In order to ensure 100% kill, they put it in an ozone bath after that, just to make sure everything is gone. So th that's the strength of ozone. We use it in several other industries as well. Uh, fire restoration, uh, where there's been flood damage over uh, because the river's backing up, sewer's backing up. You get mold and mildew problems in basements on the walls. We sell the ozonators for uh, eliminating the, the mold and mildew problem. Uh, cars that have been on uh, lease or been traded in where there's smokers, where they've had pets that have had accidents in the car or kids that have had accidents and there's odor, they use an ozonator for a half an hour to get rid of those odors forever. That pretty much winds up the whole market. Okay, so thank you very much. And that was Dan from Ozone Environmental Technology with Uvenair.
We're here with Bill Sutherland from Growing Edge Technologies based in Canada and today he's going to talk to us about the introduction of his five-part nutrient, the Aroma Formula, to the UK market. Hi there. What we've gone and done is we separate the mineral elements a little bit more than what most companies go and do. We have two for vegetation, BA and BB. We have a microbase, we have two for flowering, an FA and FB. The microbase is used through all stages of growth from beginning to the end at the same strength. So what we've done is we separate our mineral elements into individual bottles. This allows us to grow a little differently. What we're trying to do here is give you two bottles for vegetation, two bottles for flowering, with a micro base in between. Now what ends up happening is you start off the vegetation with 24 mils per 10 litres of water and use 40 mils of your micro base for the same 10 litres of water. Every four days you're going to change the strength of your nutrient solution. You're going to increase your milliliter strength by two mils every four days. And you can keep on building and you can keep building this up. Always use your 40 mils for 10 litres of water of your MB. At a certain point you're going to build the plants up to a certain pressure in the root zone. And that's what we're trying to do, is build a fertilizer pressure of nutrients to the plants. Once we get ready for flowering, we're going to level off at, say, 30 mils here. You, the gardener, will have to make the decision when it's time to flower. I can't for you. So we've leveled off at 30 mils here. We're going to start you off in flowering at 32 mils for your 10 liters of water. Again, using your 40 mils, always, of your micro base. Now, you're going to keep on applying and increase the milliliter strength of your nutrients to your plants by two mils every four days. But if you see your plants being a light green, what we want you to do is jump. You're going to increase your milliliters by more than the two mils. You may increase them by four. You may be able to increase them by six mil. Allow the plant to catch up, see what it's doing, watch the color of the leaves, light yellow, you want to increase the food. A dark green, you want to back off on the food because the plant can't handle the pressure that we deliver to the root system. By increasing the milliliters slowly but surely, what we end up going and doing is increasing that pressure. And the pressure allows the plant to be able to absorb the, mill the food that we're giving the plants. At a certain point, you're going to want to back off altogether when you're ready for harvest and you want to go and give the plants plain water or a product that we call the rinse solution to wash the mineral elements out of the plants. It's that simple. Just follow the guidelines, watch the colors, and you'll do very well with the formula. Okay, so you're not going to tell us something about how the food is better what, or what the ingredients that you're using in your bottles are better or anything like that? No, because I think we all use the same mineral salts. We do have different manufacturers that we can go and buy them from. And by going into different manufacturers and trying them, some are a little better than others, some are going to be a little purer than others. But where the real situation comes in is in the root zone and the lighting that is delivered to the plants. We want to get that strong formulation into the plants. But if we create a salty content in the water, the plants can't absorb that. So we have to do it slowly. We've got to build up the strength of the plants so that we can get the plant to go and absorb these mineral elements. When they're in the plant, the light and the energy that the plant has is going to cause it to grow bigger and faster and give you a heavier yield. No matter what crops you're on, it all works. And if by chance that you have a plant that's a low feeder, you've already built it up to a certain level so you know where that plant is you've got a plant that's a heavy feeder you can bring that even up higher to give the plants the nutrients that they want not everybody wants to go and eat steak every day people want to eat steak one day they might want something a little later on their stomach the following day and a plant is not that much different I mean, one of the greatest things you got to think about is a plant needs the same nutrients that we do but they absorb them in a different manner and if we, ha if we need the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potash, the calcium that the plants give us, and only the plant can take it out of the ground, out of the raw elements, and put it into a product that we can live off. We start eating dirt, we're not going to go nowhere, we're going to die. But a plant can take the mineral elements out of there, turn it into foods that we can eat. So the plants are very similar to what we are. We just have to look at them a little different in how they go and absorb their minerals. Getting the minerals into them, that's what counts.
So now we're talking to Kelly, and Kelly's a research scientist, and the product Kelly's brought with her today is a Vitalinked Plant Start. Okay. So Kelly, I'm going to ask you the first question. Um, at what stage in the plant growth cycle would we use Plant Start? Well, Plant Start's been specifically designed for cuttings and seedlings. It's a weaker nutrient solution. So you can use it to pre-soak your blocks or any media that you're designed to use, or use it in your actual uh, propagator. Uh, in aeroponics. It's designed for the first two weeks of the life cycle of the plant and it aids with uh, increasing rooting at an earlier stage. Great stuff. Now you're studying for a PhD in fertiliser chemistry so now I'm going to ask did you develop this product? I did um, with Sheffield Hallam University we did extensive research on it and particularly the calcium and the boron which is, encourages the rooting a lot earlier in the plant. Um, interactions have been proven to show that uh, calcium and boron cause certain hormones to be moved from the leaf surface down to the where the cutting's been taken. Um, it took about a year's work of development, but anyone who uses it will definitely see the results. Why would you not just use a half-strength growth nutrient? Why would you use this? Well, a half-strength growth nutrient will still have very high levels of your nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus, which for young plants can be poisonous. But when you half the strength of a, a growth nutrient, elements such as iron, magnesium, uh, manganese, boron, copper are also halved. But these are very important for the rooting of the plant, so we need to keep them up at a higher strength. Vitalink Plant Start has been designed with both of these micro elements at higher levels that you would normally find in a full strength nutrient, but keeping those macro elements, your nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, at lower levels. As mentioned earlier, the calcium and boron are also at very specific levels that interact and cause that rooting to be initiated a lot earlier. Right. And finally, where can we get more information on this product? Where could we get this from? The best place to go is www.vitalink.eu. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you for having me. Hi and welcome back. I'm now with Dennis from Geopart. Welcome Dennis. Thank you for coming to the show today. Thank you. Uh, he'll be talking to us about the fabric plant containers, which are brand new to the UK market. So why would somebody use a fabric plant container rather than the conventional plastic plant pot? Yeah, well the reason that they would use the fabric plant container is air root pruning. And so what happens in the fabric plant containers is when the roots grow out to the inside edge of the plant container, they'll actually get trapped, the root tips will get trapped in the loose fabric and because it's porous, the air on the outside of the container will prune the tips of those roots. That's air root pruning. And that forces the roots to branch out further back on the root system with more fibrous roots. The fibrous roots are your feeder roots. They're more efficient in taking up the water and the nutrients. So you end up with thousands of fibrous roots throughout the root zone. Rather than like in a plastic uh, pot, they'll grow out to the inside edge of the container and then they'll circle the container. And they'll continue to circle the container without being, able to, uh, being forced to branch out with those lateral feeder roots. And so that's the primary advantage. The secondary advantage is the whole container is porous and breathable. So it lets air into the root zone, it creates a healthy environment for the roots, and when the pot, the, the soil dries out, it'll dry out more evenly throughout the whole container rather than just from the top down. So can you tell us what differentiates Geopot from other fabric plant containers out there in the market? Yeah, what differentiates the Geopot is the construction of our pots. We use a really high grade fabric um, and if you feel it, it's very thick and uh, really, really strong. Um, we use a bonded polyester thread, which is the same thread used in like sails and sailboats. It's UV protected, it can stay wet without decaying. We fold over the top lip of the container and it makes it more rigid so it doesn't flop in when you're trying to water or fill it with soil. We have options of having handles that are sewn on, they're really strong and durable. It's really convenient to move your containers around. Um, and then we also offer it in black or tan, um, just for the preference. Sometimes it's aesthetics, sometimes there's reasons for uh, if it's outside heat, uh, the tan doesn't warm up quite as much as the black would. Um, and then we have the option of our Velcro seam container, 
Um, it's really nice for transplanting. So a lot of growers will start out in a smaller container, then move up to a larger container for flowering. Um, this makes it nice uh, to open up and get that root ball out without having any plant uh, shock during transplanting. Thank you for your time today. And that was Dennis from Geopop. Okay, so we're here with John from iGrowTech. Hello, John. Hi, yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we're here with iSupport today. This That's is the project right. you brought with you, which is a plant support and training device. That's right, is that yeah. right? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about that, if that's okay. That's fine. And we'll get to know it a bit more. So the first question is, do you need to use any other products with this plant device? This no. Support? No, there's no need for any other training devices, supports, plant name, anything like that at all. Great. Fantastic. So that's good. It's just all good to go with yep. this. Yep. No other support. That's right, yeah. Great. It's the only product on the market that you can actually train and support a plant with at the same time, without the need for any other ties or anything else. Fantastic. Okay. So what are the benefits of using this rather than yo-yos or netting? Uh, the main benefits are the, the plant's independent in the grow room. So if you have a problem, uh, maybe a pest or some sort of disease issue, you can move the plants out easily. Whereas if it's in plant netting, it's tied in in place and very difficult to move around. Obviously being in a small space, maybe a tent environment, um, there's not much room. So if you've got things hanging around your light supporting your plant, it's very difficult to turn, get in there, feed and so on. Is this reusable? Could you use this again? Yeah, definitely. I would say it would last years. Great stuff. Okay, so where can we get more information on iSupport? Um, you can go on the website, agrotech.com. Um, you can also go in um, your local retailer. Um, they will most likely be stocking it. You could also go in if they are stocking it. That you could ask them they would be able to get it from you from um, the wholesaler highlights. So. Oh, great. Yeah. So we're stocking it at the moment. Okay, that was John from iGrowTech with the iSupport. Thank you.